Hi everyone, my name is Ryan from Make Test Battle. If you've watched any of our videos, you probably know that the Rapid Strike is one of my favourite blasters. We're going to go through a mod guide of the Nerf Rapid Strike blaster. I'm going to show you how to take out all of the components, we're going to go through the wiring, all the switches, how to do the soldering, and then how to install all the parts. To start with, let me take you through all of the parts that you'll need to complete this mod. Here is an overview of the tools and parts you will need for this modding project. For tools, we'll need a Dremel to make room in the shell for some parts a tiny bit of hot glue to secure some parts, wire strippers for neatly stripped wire, pliers and side cutters for removing components, and some screwdrivers for dis and reassembly. For soldering, we need a soldering iron. I use a temperature controlled station as the preferred option, but you can get away with a basic iron. Very useful, but not strictly necessary, are handy hands to hold wires, a magnet tray to store screws, and a container to put parts into. For the build, we will need some 4mm and 2mm heat shrink, as well as solder. And for the rewiring, we will use 18 AWG stranded silicon wire. A 1000mAh 3S LiPo with a 25C discharge will provide enough power to run our two Falcon flywheel motors and an AliExpress Ranson motor, although a larger battery is certainly possible. Three Falcons would also work, but this configuration would have a lower rate of fire. To control the rapid strike, we will be using two high current micro switches. This build will sacrifice the pusher return mechanism for simplicity. At high rates of fire, it's not really necessary anyway. I will also be burning in the ransoms with a 1S LiPo and methylated spirits, using some alligator clips to stop them from burning out. For a LiPo build, you will also need the appropriate plug and a balancing charger and power supply. Links to all of these parts are in the description. We start with the blaster, fresh out of the box. Open it up, and let's get to work. Take out the battery tray from the front. We'll store our LiPo here, so remove the tray part from the front cover plate for an easy access battery storage area. The next step is to open everything up. Unscrew everything, and keep note of what screws go where. Tack rail screws are shorter, and the iron sight screw is much longer. I use a magnet tray to keep everything nice and separated. To get at the insides, take the two halves apart and snip the connecting wire. What a mess. Let's fix it. As for the demolisher from the previous video, we will begin by taking everything out. Take out all the bits and set them aside. Unlike the demolisher, only a few of the stock parts are unnecessary. We need to remove the electrical parts, so start by removing this cover plate, then pull out the trigger group to get access to the screws holding in the pusher box. Unscrew them and remove it. Unscrew the flywheel cage and we're almost ready to pull the entire loom out. A few small lock switches and the battery terminal spring are all that is left. With those out of the way, take the entire loom out of the blaster so we can get to work on it. Before we begin, let's start an important process for the ransom motor, the burn-in. Take the alligator clips and strip a section of each. Tin the wires for a good electrical connection and solder on the connectors for your small battery. I used a 1S LiPo and DuPont wire pins to connect to it, but you could use two AA batteries in a holder instead. Once attached, cover the joint with heat shrink and repeat the process for the negative wire. Grab the methylated spirits and pour some into a bottle. You could use deionized water, but metho evaporates quickly and won't rust the motor if not fully cleared out. Take the motor and dunk it into the liquid. Connect the terminals and let it run for about 30 minutes. Be careful if using a LiPo to listen for when the motor starts to slow down, charge, or change the battery when this happens. Once the burn is complete, take the motor out of the bottle and dry it out with some paper towel. While that's happening, let's get started on that wiring. Break down everything into parts, snip off the flywheel cage and push a motor. Now, pull out all the wires and parts from the trigger group. There's no right way of doing this, so just remove wires, screws, and the tab on the bottom as needed. The only parts we care about are the trigger and the rev trigger. Everything else can go. You might want to hold on to the springs though for any future mods that might need them. The pusher mechanism is up for deconstruction next. Remove the screws and open the tabs to get access to the insides. Be careful of the grease. Pull out the stock motor, and using a large blade screwdriver, pry off the worm gear so we can swap it onto our ransom motor. There is a panel on the flywheel cage that is soldered on. You could remove it with a soldering iron and some patience, or just break it off with pliers. Take off the two back straps, and again, break off the circuit board. To remove the rubber shroud, take out this screw, then unwrap it. Accessing the flywheels is done by pressing out the four tabs around the cage. Removing the flywheels is easy and is done by placing two small screwdrivers through the holes in the rear of the cage and pressing down firmly. Once off, we can take out the motors. If they break, use this as an opportunity to look at the inside of a DC motor. Or two opportunities in my case. We're now done with the disassembly of the internal components. Now it's time to put our replacement parts in. 
Let's start with the trigger group. This is how we will mount our two switches. This stage will be affected by exactly what switches you have, but the process is the same. For the rev trigger, we need to cut off some of the arm and the roller. For the trigger, we need to cut the whole arm off. I should really get some sharper side cutters someday. To fit the switches, dremel out as much of the cage as needed. The ones I have fit fairly well once enough is removed. We also need to dremel down the covering plate so that it fits back on. Again, this will depend on the exact switches you have and how you fit them into this piece. The trigger will also need adjustment to fit. Dremel down the surfaces very carefully and gradually until it nicely fits and activates your micro switch. This is what everything looked like when I was done. This bit is done, so let's piece it back together. The burn-in should now be completed, but the ransom motor won't fit in the pusher due to its large commutator. Cover the greased gears to stop plastic fragments and dremel out the area on both halves until the ransom fits nicely. To allow it to operate the pusher, simply press the worm gear onto the motor shaft. Note that it only goes on one way. As with most flywheel cages, there are tabs that prevent replacement motors from fitting. Take the Dremel and flatten these down. If you take too much off and the motors are loose, you can compensate by hot gluing them in. Mine was still a reasonably tight fit, so I didn't need to. Ensure the motors are rotated 180 degrees from each other. Most have a red dot to indicate alignment, so make sure it is on opposite sides. When the motors are securely in, press the flywheels back on and reattach the other half of the cage. Before we can continue, we need to Dremel out a few of the support posts that stop our trigger group fitting back in and cut a channel here for wire access. There's also another battery tab to remove in the other half of the shell. Let's get rewiring. First, make sure to identify the common, normally open, and normally closed tabs on your switch. The positions for the COM, NO tabs, and the NC tabs on your switch will change where you need to wire to. Let's go over the circuit. There are many circuit diagrams available online, so instead, I will show you where to solder the wires. We want to go from our battery to the normally open of our rev trigger then from the common to the flywheels. This is to switch the flywheels on and off. To supply power to the pusher, a wire will go from the common to the normally open on the trigger switch. For motor braking on the pusher, for precise control of firing, connect the negative of the LiPo to the normally closed tab, then take the common and the normally closed tab to the motor. Three wires is a hassle to solder to one tab, so take a wire from the pusher motor tab that connects to the normally closed on the trigger to the flywheels to allow power to return. With this setup, the flywheels must be spinning for the pusher to operate. If the rev trigger is let go, the pusher can still run for a few moments as the flywheels will act as generators to power it. The trigger will motor brake the pusher for accurate control of firing. Feel free to pause or rewatch this segment until you are sure of exactly where to solder the wires for your switches, remembering the exact positions will depend on the make and model of your micro switches. Let's start soldering in roughly the same order as our diagram. We will start with the positive LiPo plug wire. To get the right length, lay out the wire in place and snip it with a bit extra. Strip the wire and twist the strands together. To tin the wire, melt some solder onto your iron, place it against the wire and melt the solder into the wire, not onto the iron when the wire heats up. Repeat this process for the switch tab, heating the tab and melting solder onto it. Join the two by melting the solder together. Unlike me, try to limit any movement of the wire when it cools. If the join looks frosted or crystallized, it's a bad connection. Reheat it and try again. Next, let's do the positive wire to connect the common to the triggers normally open. Strip and tin just as before. Again, to get the right length, lay it in position and cut. I realized here that I needed to cut out some more of the trigger group to allow that wire to fit through nicely. The last wire for this switch is for the flywheels. For this one, I soldered on the end, then cut it to the right length once I had passed it under the trigger group. Although it's not strictly necessary, it's good practice to try and reduce twists in the wire to make assembly easier, particularly for short lengths. Orient the two switches correctly to find the right way to solder this wire. If done right, they should nicely fit into position without any twists. The black wire for the LiPo plug is now attached. Solder it to the normally closed, parving it to the front of the blaster, then cutting. To attach the pusher, cut a length of red and black long enough to allow you to work with. Strip and tin these two and the end of your black wire to size it up to run to the flywheels. Tin the rants and commutator plates. Be careful, the plates seem to be coated and need a lot of heat. You will notice the solder stop forming a ball and starting to stick to the surface when it has been heated enough. Solder on the red to one side and the two black wires to the other. It doesn't matter which though. Replace the motor into the pusher and seal it up. 
You can add the screws back in if you want. I didn't. Finally, solder up the black and red wires on the motor to the correct terminals on the trigger switch, black to the normally closed, and red to common. We can now do the final assembly on the trigger group. Place the rev switch in and run the two red wires under the group. Place the trigger switch in and pull the four wires to the front of the blaster. Ensure the three wires fold flat under the pusher mechanism like this, then place it into the shell. The uncut wire is cut to length now for the flywheels. Let's attach our LiPo plug. A piece of heat shrink is needed for each wire to prevent from accidental shorts. For our XT60 plug, grab the longer red and black wire and cut them both to the same length. Then strip, tin, and slide the heat shrink over the wire. Fill a terminal on the plug with solder. Then attach the wire. Repeat for the other terminal. Make sure to connect the red to the positive and black to the negative to prevent confusion. Once the plug is cool, slide the heat shrink over the terminals and shrink it using a heat gun, lighter, or the soldering iron. The plug should now nicely sit at the front of the blaster. Make sure to path it around the flywheel cage screw post. The final soldering step is the flywheels. Tin two terminals on one of the motor and solder on the remaining two wires. We need to make sure the flywheels are spinning the right way, so plug in your LiPo and place a dart in the mouth of your cage. Press the rev trigger, and if the dart goes through, it's correct. If not, you will need to swap the sides of the wires. Please ignore the connected LiPo. Make sure the LiPo is always disconnected when soldering. Once swapped, the dart should go through the right way. The final step is to wire two short connecting tabs onto the second motor. Solder one end, cut it to length, then solder the other end. Repeat for the other tab. And we're done! Place the cage back in position and give it a quick test. Note that the pusher does not retract, but with a ransom pusher, this delay is hardly noticeable. Take a few moments now to admire your work. Before the shell can go back together, we need to remove some of the pegs on the opposite side. Dremel them out until the shell fits together. We can now reassemble. Screw in the top plate of the trigger group to hold all the parts in place and cover the wires with the magwell cover plate. Don't forget to screw in the pusher mechanism. Finish up by putting the rest of the internal cosmetic parts back in, such as the sling points, sight pieces, tactical rail tabs, and the rest. To hold the jam door closed, cut off one of the old switches and put it back in place. You may need to hot glue this part in. Watch out for the magazine spring when it goes back in. It can jump out and is easily lost. All that is left is to screw down the flywheel cage and put the stock back in place. Put the shell back on, screw it closed, and we're finished. Plug the LiPo in, close up the battery tray, and finalize your now properly rapid, rapid strike. Let's do some comparison. Before modding, the Australian Spec Blaster gets 45 to 50 FPS with a mediocre fire rate. After modding, we have an incredible rate of fire of about 11 to 12 darts per second with 105 to 115 FPS. And there you have it. The Rapid Strike is now fully overhauled and an absolute beast of a machine. Over the next few videos, I'm going to be turning this into probably the ultimate Rapid Strike. I will be adding an undermounted swarm fire, I will be adding an afterburner to the front, and also integrating an ammo counter and select fire system. So burst fire, full auto, single shot. So this will be an ongoing series. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and get notifications from our Facebook page so you get updated when each of these videos comes out. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions about the build process, feel free to ask them in the comment section below or on our Facebook page at Make Test Battle. Thanks. Bye.